All right, it does not now. All right, so thank you once again to everyone um, for joining us uh, for this presentation. Uh, super excited to be presenting on all the, uh, the, the helpful stuff, all the fun information about Belize. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get us started right here. So first of all, I did wanna give everybody uh, an intro uh, to our company. Leslie and I are representing ECI Development and uh, we are a real estate development company that's operating across the Latin American region, primarily in Belize. Nicaragua and Panama. And as you can see here on the screen, uh, we offer everything from branded residences, such as, uh, you know, the Marriott residences that we have breaking ground later this year, the Best Western Grand Bayman Gardens in Belize, uh, all the way through to tiny home offerings just across the region. If you guys haven't heard about our tiny homes, uh, do check those out. Uh, we have property in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, uh, soon to come Argentina, Ecuador. So we're really um, working on uh, getting to know as much about every single country in the region and then providing all of that helpful information out there to the people uh, such as you all who are joining us today that want to get this information, want to learn about the different destinations, want to learn about uh, exploring ownership opportunities overseas. Uh, but today specifically, we are going to be talking about the country of Belize. Uh, and I'm going to give you here just a brief overview of ECI's history, just so that you guys understand who we are and where we came from. So our company was founded in 1998. Uh, we've been in the region, as I mentioned, for over 24 years. Uh, you can see over there just the progression of the different communities that we've acquired and have been able to expand and grow into these lovely, uh, pretty much at, at Nicaragua, we have uh, Grand Pacifica and our, our CEO likes to refer to it as, as this beautiful village by the sea. And that, that's exactly what um, is at the heart of ECI development. It's finding these beautiful uh, developments and turning them into communities. Community is at the heart of what we do here um, at ECI. And so as Leslie mentioned, you guys know where that Q&A section is. So go ahead and as you see these little questions on the screen, go ahead and type in your answer. So the first question that I wanna hear from everybody, have you been to Belize yet? How many of you have visited my country? How many of you guys have at least just passed through, right? Have you been to Key Cocker? Were you down south? Um, did you check out the mountains there? And I'm seeing a lot of responses coming in already. A lot of yes, yes, no, no, not, not yet. That's right, not yet. Yet. You haven't been to Belize yet, so don't write it off. Um, so a lot, it's, it's, a, it's an even mix here. Carolyn, thanks so much, beautiful country. So I see a good, a good mix here of people who have and have not, that's very good. So the reason we ask is because guys, this presentation is primarily geared towards giving you as much information about the destination as possible, as much about the country of Belize as possible. So you're gonna hear a lot of different things ranging from tourism, talking about the economy, talking about the financial stability of the country. It's really just to get your mind wrapped around uh, the country as a whole. Um, and thereafter, we will answer any of your additional questions that we probably didn't cover. So thank you to everybody who, who contributed so far. And this is our agenda for this evening. So we're first, we're going to talk about why Belize, why you should be considering Belize, why it should be on your radar, uh, and digging into some of the, the misconceptions about the destination when it comes to property ownership. Uh, one thing we've learned about being in the space for just over 24 years is that each country, uh, you know, not rocket science, each country is very different. But um, they, there's just different ways of going about things, whether that's through the government, um, whether that is culturally, uh, whether that's just with the language, right? Uh, there's a lot of different misconceptions that we've, um, you know, come across and we are able to clarify for the people that we serve. And so Leslie's going to be walking us through a lot of those. Uh, we're going to be talking about the different hotspots in the destination. You heard me mention a few of them earlier, um, and we're going to be going over those as well. And then last but not least is, of course, the Q&A section where we're going to be answering all of your questions um, at the end of the presentation. And please stay tuned all the way to the end. There is a special free gift that we will be offering everybody um, who does stay on. So do stay on until the end of the webinar to hear or to learn more about that. All right, so let's get started. So uh, some quick facts here about Belize. It has a population of just over 400,000. Um, and you can see right there on the map, I hope you can see my cursor. That is where Belize is. This is a very small country. As you can see there, just over, uh, just under 9,000 square miles wide. It's smack in between uh, Mexico. You have Guatemala and Honduras to the south, right in Central America, directly on the Caribbean. Um, and another very fun fact that we like to share with everybody is that the Belize is pegged uh, two to one to the US dollar. 
And so, uh, you know, you whenever you head down, you do not need to convert your currency. Uh, we they won't take your coins, but U.S. bills are completely accepted. And like I mentioned, it is pegged two to one. Uh, so if you see something, you know, a, a, a bottle of Coke, it says two dollars. That's two Belizean dollars, which is one U.S. dollar. Um, super easy uh, when you're traveling and and doing any sort of transactions. Um, and so why Belize? Why has Belize been this very popular destination for, for a lot of expats, for a lot of vacationers over the past few years? And one of the things is its close proximity to America, uh, to North America. You can see here that there are just so many uh, different hubs just across the US and Canada um, that fly directly into Belize. And then you can even see that there's some more expanding into South and Central America. Um, you know, there's, there's just, it's so easy to get here, whereas some, in some other destinations, you'd have to get connecting flights, you'd have a lot of layovers. Uh, that's not the case with Belize. It is super easy to get here, and more and more flights are coming, uh, even throughout. Right now, what we're seeing is um, some of the flights that had paused during the COVID uh, time, they're now starting to fly again. They're starting very slowly and then getting back up into their regular schedule, so that's very exciting. Uh, to see the travel coming back into the destination. Uh, we do have also regional air carriers in the country. For those of you who answered yes in the previous um, uh, question there about being in the country, you probably flew on one of these, these aircrafts here. So you have Tropic Air and Maya Island Air. These are the two main uh, carriers that transport people between the different districts in Belize. Uh, and another way for, for transportation is you guys can rent a car or you can take a water taxi. That's also very fun. And that's something that we've, we encourage a lot of people to do at least once is to experience the, the, the water taxi transportation between the Belize city and one of the islands here. Uh, it's, it's very scenic, it's a little slow, it can be a little crowded, but it, it is something that you should try at least once when you're down here. All right, so we have another question here. And if you were listening, you probably heard me mention how many. So how many districts are there in Belize? Is it A5, B6, C7, or D10? It was also displayed on the map there a little bit earlier. Um, I'll give everybody a few seconds here to give us their answers. I see Debbie, you said six. James is saying seven. We have six. We have five. All right, a good mix there. All right, some people were listening. I'm seeing good amount of submissions here. <laughs> Jeff, I love that, five to seven. <laughs> Tim, honest, you forgot. I, I, I will respect that. You did forget, that's nice. All right, guys, um, we're, we're not gonna answer these ones. Write your answers down. Um, we're gonna give you guys the answers at the end of the presentation there. So make sure you're writing down your answers and then you can see uh, if you got those right at the end there. Uh, we're also going to have some little helpful tips here for everybody. So one thing, when you're visiting the country uh, and you're, you're walking by the beach, use coconut oil um, as, as a natural insect repellent, especially around the noceums, as they're called colloquially here. Uh, essentially, they're sand flies. And so we just recommend to everybody just a natural insect repellent is to use coconut oil. Uh, and that's your helpful tidbit uh, when you're down here in Belize. All right, so another one about why Belize is the uh, common law and English is the official language. So when you're down here, you know, legal documents will look very familiar to you. Uh, you know, it's, it's all in English, which makes it very easy for you to be able to process, you know, any sort of transaction just becomes that much easier. Uh, you know, our neighbors to the north, south uh, and west, uh, their, their mother tongue is Spanish. And you will get a lot of Spanish here in the country as well. You'll, you'll hear people, for example, myself, I speak English, Spanish. Uh, Creole, which is the common language here, and of course Mayan, uh, that's just from ancestry. But you know, everybody here speaks English. It really doesn't matter, um, you know, where in the country you are. Everybody will speak English, and so that just makes it a little bit, a little bit more comfortable for everybody. You can acclimate very easily. You can ask for directions, and people will, you know, send you the right way. Um, and and that just makes it a lot more comfortable for everybody. And and it's it's another reason why it's become so popular here. Uh, another reason is the financial and banking security. So one of the main uh, you know, incentives for, for property investors here is you don't have any capital gains tax. Uh, those of you who have uh, you know, purchased property previously will understand the benefit behind this. And essentially that just means that uh, you know, any profit that you do make from the resale or, in, or any future resale of your, of your residence, um, if there's any profit there, you, you, you don't have any taxes on that profit, whereas in many other countries you do. Um, you know, there's, there's some other incentives there that are listed on the screen for you. 
um, that, that just make Belize a very attractive destination um, for, for international banking as well. Uh, and as I mentioned, you have Key International Bank here that was named uh, one of the best offshore banks in Latin America uh, for the year of 2019. Uh, they continue to receive a lot of accolades similar to this one. And so you will see um, that the financial sector in, in the country is, is growing. It is becoming stronger as the years go on. Uh, and I mentioned some attractive incentive programs, but there's also residency programs. So you can become a resident, a permanent resident of the country. Uh, these are the two main ways here. So you have the Qualified Retired Persons Program or the QRP. Uh, to qualify for that, you just need to be 45 years of age. Uh, you do need to spend 30 days uh, a year in the country, but the incentives are that you can you know, bring all of your items from the United States duty-free. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't allow you to work in the country. It is for retirees specifically, um, but you can see there that there are some incentives that are available to you if you do choose to move down here and live as a Belizean resident. Um, and then permanent residency can be obtained, you know, a number of different ways, but uh, there are no age restrictions and you, you are required to live in the country for a year. Uh, you do get two weeks or 14 days to, to head out into the country, but during that process where you are obtaining your residency, you are required to stay in the country uh, for that one year. Uh, once you have that or once you have your residency and you're in application, you are allowed to work in the country. So this does let you be, as I mentioned, a permanent resident of the country. You are able to work out here um, and, you know, and live your, your best beach life, as we let everybody know. Uh, and you can obtain citizenship. It can lead to a passport within five years if that is something that you are serious about. Um, and this is one that we do talk about for anyone interested uh, in, in obtaining residency through investment. So you do have the investor residency program. As you can see there, it does require a minimum investment of $250,000, uh, but it does provide you with all the perks and benefits that I mentioned previously. Um, and it is, you, you are able to pass that residency on to your family members uh, as they qualify for, as dependents there. Uh, what I would like to do if there's anybody, because I have been speaking with some of you uh, about this very topic here about residency. If it is something that you are interested in learning more about, you see that email address down there, webinar at ecidevelopment.com. Go ahead and send an email to that, um, to that address and request the residency resource guide. And we'll be sending that over to you. That will have the complete complete breakdown uh, of all the different residency programs and just goes into more detail about what the process is going to look like for you. Um, so if that is something that you're interested in, please do go ahead and request that, um, that residency resource kit. You see the email address right there, webinar at ecidevelopment.com. All right, Leslie, why don't you jump in here a little bit and talk to us about the economy here. Absolutely. So obviously Belize, I mean, they've got a growing economy. I mean, yes, you know, we talk about what happened last year with the pandemic, but I will tell you here on the island, it's alive again. It's so exciting to see, you know, tourism is definitely coming back. Um, this past week's been extremely busy and I feel like next week with Lobster Fest coming up, it's going to be an exciting time on the island for sure. So definitely uh, seeing a growing economy we have, you know, with our international banking, we had mentioned about Key Bank. Um, you know, just the progress and things on the mainland. I will note that one of my favorite stores is on this slide. Uh, Marab on the mainland is an exciting, awesome store. If you've never been, you definitely want to make that trip and go over there and check it out. So um, yeah, Belize is really happening right now. It's the place to be. And we're going to kind of talk about that more. So let's see if I have access, Ivan. Okay. Um, again, tourism on the rise. You can see there, we won't go through in depth, but you can see it's just completely um, been growing steadily from 2009 upwards. Obviously, we had that little lull last year when you know the country, as all the others, were uh, closed off for a little while. But like I said, you know, since the airport reopened in October, it's been trending up. Um, the holidays time, you saw a lot more um, activity on the island, and you know, right now for June and July, which is normally our slow season. It's definitely not slow season here right now. So that's very exciting. Uh, the community is, you know, very appreciative to everybody that's coming. And like I said, um, we're seeing that the next few months from what I can hear, um, numbers with tourism board are looking really great. Okay. And this we really like to highlight. So Belize, if you, you know, are on social media or you're seeing in the news, we really, I mean, the headlines are popping up from 
the hotel brands that are, you know, launching on the island. Um, of course, we're excited about our Marriott that's going to be breaking ground soon. Um, you had the Hilton that opened in 2017 and, you know, the Alaya had just opened. So you're really seeing things in the news here currently with the trends happening in Amber's Key, um, the tourism that's coming, you know, more flights being added. So um, it's very exciting to see all the news uh, related to Belize. Oh, take me back, Ivan. Whoops, what happened there? Sorry about that, guys. That was, probably, that was probably me. Sorry about that. No, I just wanted to jump in here for this slide here. I talk fast, but I don't know if I can talk fast. <laughs> I'm not official, but I talk, I do talk fast. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was probably me. Sorry, no, I just wanted to, before you move on to the next slide, um, I just wanted to jump in here and, and sort of echo what you mentioned just now. So as you can see here, you know, these are international you know, worldwide international brands that are coming down here to the destination, uh, you know, and they're not going to do that just out of a guess, just out of assumption. No, they've done their due diligence. They've been down here. They've gone snorkeling. They've gone and do all the tours. They've, you know, done their research and seen that it is a viable destination for them. And that's something that we like to share with everybody is when you see that these big international brands are exploring a destination, just, you know, looking, talking about it even, you know, that that's something to keep an eye out for. That, that means that they, they see potential for growth there. That means that they see, you know, a benefit to them as a business there. And it's something that you as a savvy investor can then follow suit um, and do your own due diligence and research on. So I'll give you back control of the slide there, um, Leslie. Okay, not yet. Just go ahead and next slide. All right. There we go. So why Belize, mother's nature splendor. And all you have to do is look outside at the waters and just everything around the island. It's truly beautiful. Um, that's one of the things he was talking about, the puddle jumpers when you fly in. I do like to take the flights. I've taken the water taxi. Um, I do recommend doing both because they're totally different experiences. But when you fly in on those puddle jumpers, you can see all the different shades of blue and you, it's so clear and it's just, it's amazing. You know, some people are a little nervous because they're like, oh, it's a real small plane. But I'm like, no, <laughs> get on that plane. You fly really low and you're you're gonna you're gonna be glad you did it for sure um, so it's a very you know diverse country when you go over to mainland which when I first moved here I just stayed on the island and I never really got to experience mainland but when you go over and go to the jungles and I was so excited the first time because I love monkeys if you've watched some of these videos you know that I, I really like monkeys and I got to see howler monkeys in the jungle like just out in the wild and I was so excited about that so there's so much to explore on mainland. We're going to highlight some of that in the next slides coming. I don't know. It doesn't want to be my friend. There we go. No, Thank you. no worry. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. Got, you. got my back. So this highlights some of the different areas. Um, Coruscant, you have the Cayo District, which again, I you know, in the Cayo District, there's so many cool things to do um, out in the jungle and the river boats and um, highly recommend going and doing that, the cave tubing. Placencia is another beautiful area that a lot of people travel to. Of course, Ambergris Key um, is, like we said, you know, where the tourism is um, on this island. You have Turnip Atoll, and then of course the Blue Hole is pretty legendary and people know that as well for the diving and just even going the aerial, um, you know, flyovers of the Blue Hole. And then some of the activities we do, Maya temples, the Belize Zoo. I finally got to experience the Belize Zoo and it was a magical place. Um, Sylvia, one of the, the animals there was just so beautiful. And of course, just walking through and it was a really cool interactive experience. So high, highly recommend going to the Belize Zoo on mainland. Again, we talked about cave tubing and then diving and snorkeling. Um, if you love water sports, this is definitely a place that you want to come. Um, the snorkeling experience is when you go to the different areas and then you go to Shark Ray Alley. That's where I had my swimming with the sharks experience for the first time. And I love going over there now as often as I can. Um, and then you just you can island hop. We hop, hop over to Key Cocker. I did that this past weekend. I had a friend in town and it was so fun just to be able to hop over to the island and spend some time there and walk around and experience Key Cocker. Um, the fishing, if you're into fishing, definitely, uh, you know, you've got so many options here with that. And the Jaguar Reserve. Now I will say I have not done that yet, but that's on my <laughs> list because look at that beautiful creature. Have you been able to do that, Ivan? I have not. I, I was going to mention there is also a baboon sanctuary. There's monkeys there. Uh, so that's another one you should check out, Leslie. Yeah, 
that. I need to know about this. Okay, that's going on my list as well. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's another one to do. Uh, but I did actually want to pause a little bit on, on this slide as well. And, and this is a good point that you mentioned about the Belize Zoo. One thing that people don't know about the, the zoo here is that it's, you know, it's not your typical zoo necessarily where the animals are just in cages. It's more of a rehabilitation center. Um, and so... The, the way we described it, we took um, one of our interns over recently uh, when we were on the mainland because she had never, you know, she'd never been to the country. So we were just showing her around. Um, and, and so what, what one of our, um, our team members mentioned was that when you go to this zoo, technically you're the one that's in the cage because the animals are simply allowed to, to be free. They, they, they're in their habitat. Um, you know, they're, they're not just in a box or in a cage. They're, they're really just flourishing. And, and that's something that people do enjoy. And after they visit, they go, wow like that i've never been to a zoo like that before so that that is definitely a highlight there um and then another thing that i wanted to talk about was you know i mentioned that i worked with resorts and hospitality um and one of the things that the big uh online travel agencies like expedia apple vacation group those those kinds of companies mentioned is that belize was just so unique for having all of these different um, activities and you know excursions that you can do, and they're all things that you can do within a day. Normally, in other destinations, you know, you either fish or you you know go up a mountain or you visit temples, and they're all very scattered around. But Belize, being so small, um, having all of this, you know, just within reach of, of you know everyone else, um, is just a unique selling point there. And so that that's another one that that we wanted to highlight for everybody. I completely agree. That's awesome. Okay, and because we're in Belize, we like to be a little silly, but you will have an unbelievable time. <laughs> and what's another one? Come on, Ivan, keep them coming. Mm, I'm uh, serious. There's something with serious there, but it's blanking on my body. I apologize. <laughs> we, like to go, we like to answer you better believe it. Better believe it, indeed, indeed. If, if I answered someone's email, if, if, your e if my email says that at the bottom, unbelievable regards, please just, you know, that's just something we use here. Everybody uses it. Um, so if you see that in there, that's just something you, you can expect from everybody. <laughs> we love it. We love being cheesy, but... Um, yeah. Again, we'll just keep on moving on why Belize because there's so many reasons why. Number seven is the affordable Caribbean real estate and the low property taxes. And it, it really is. I remember when I first came here, we were, you know, kind of curious and like a lot of people do, they wander around or they look at the, you know, what's for sale and all that. And I remember when I was seeing some of the numbers, I kept going, that can't be right. I, I moved here from Texas and in Texas, our property taxes were pretty steep and I kept you know, just asking people, there's something wrong. They're like missing some digits in there, but no, it was correct. It's really low property taxes, which is a bonus. Indeed, indeed. You don't see those kinds or the, that level um, of, of, of taxation just in other destinations. And it's exactly what you said. Every time we, we mention, you know, how much property tax someone's going to be paying on either condominium residents or a lot, they're like, are you, are you sure that's correct? That's, that's like, it's exactly what you said. You're, you're missing a couple of zeros there. No, no, it is. It is 200. It is $300. It is um, just, you know, that, that's all it is there. Um, so, so that is another positive there for, for everybody to consider. Absolutely. Okay, so why is Belize kind of the hot spot? If you've been on any of our webinars, you know, we talk about this, um, this graph here and really we've got Nicaragua, on up to Caribbean, Costa Rica, Argentina, Belize, up to you know Brazil, Panama, the Pacific, Costa Rica. So really up at the top of that chart, you see those products that are what we call a mature market. Um, you know, they've got the cash flow, they've been around for a while, they're popular, that type of thing. And then down in the lower part of that curve, beginning with Nicaragua, it's more of products that, you know, have room to grow. They're in that area right now where you can get in, you know, early, kind of be an early adopter and, you know, hang on to that and really see the appreciation of those properties. And then Belize, as you can see, is truly in what I like to call that sweet spot. So that's another reason why Belize is really the hot spot and something that you definitely should be looking at at this time. That's right, Leslie. And, and what we like to tell people when we show them this graphic here is it really depends you know, what sort of an investor, what sort of a buyer you are. Are you looking for something that is just going to provide you cash flow? You know, you're not too particular about, you know, the location itself. You just want to know that it's going to be providing you cash flow month. You just want that paycheck going in every single month. Um, then you look at those markets that are a little bit on the mature side, like Leslie mentioned, you know, Pacific Coast, um, you know, Costa Rica, Panama, Brazil, uh, Costa Rican Highlands. Those are the areas you want to look at if you are looking at property that is just going to be cash flowing for you. Now, do know that because 
because it's in a mature market, the prices are much higher, right? As you can expect. Um, and then you go down on that curve there. Now the price to acquire the property, to buy that property might be a little bit lower, but so will the cash flow. Uh, the flip side of that though, is that you can definitely expect a lot of appreciation as time goes on, as this destination becomes more and more popular, as more people hear about it. Um, you know, you can be guaranteed that your residence is going to be seeing some appreciation there. And then like Leslie mentioned, the lease is right there in the middle. You can have property that is at an affordable price, will appreciate and will provide you with cash flow. Um, so that, you know, you get the best of, of all the worlds there really and truly. And here's a Perfect, 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 perfect example. Um, you know, we, we you take a look at this one here. This is a screenshot that we took from a real estate listing for a 500 square foot, 500 square feet, um, 500 square foot residence here on the Caribbean. It is in the Bahamas. And look at that beautiful price mark right there, $595,000. That doesn't include closing costs. It doesn't include furniture. That doesn't include all the other stuff that you'd have to factor in. And so that is a perfect example of a residence that is in a mature market. We all heard about the, you know, the Bahamas and, and, and the Keys uh, in the early 90s, late 80s. Th that was a destination to be at. That was where you had to go. Everyone was taking summer vacations there, right? And at that point, the properties were easy to acquire. They were at a lower price. Uh, the cash flow probably wasn't as much as it is right now. But notice, you know, once the, the, the market has matured, the price of the home stabilizes, the cash flow is just continuous, the, the, the market is already matured, people know about it, and they'll just continue to be going there year after year. So this is, again, a, a, a prime example here of, um, you know, a property in the Bahamas, whereas you can compare to Belize. Now, you would be saving approximately <laughs> uh, $200,000 there in comparison uh, to the Bahamas there, because if you look at something that is of similar value, similar size, um, you know, you're, you're seeing it right there. You can definitely save at least 200,000 uh, with a, you know, with a purchase there when you're looking at property in Belize. Oops. There we go. All right. So we have one more question for everybody. What holiday do we celebrate on November 19th? What holiday is celebrated here in Belize on November 19th? Is it our independence? Is it Garifuna Settlement Day? Is it Belize's New Year? Uh, or is it Dia de los Muertos? Come on, let me see what everybody has some responses there for this one. And I'm seeing a lot of A, B, some D, Garifuna Settlement Day, a lot of A for independence. All righty, a good mix here. Remember, guys, write these down. We're going to give you guys the response, or rather the answer to all of these, um, these questions towards the end of the presentation there. But I'm seeing a good mix of people here. Some of you are getting it right. All right, I'm going to move ahead. Just mark down your answers. And here is your second Belizean tidbit here. Ditch the lacrosse. Roy Seltzer. And why do we say that to everybody is because if you are somebody that's going to come down to a country like Belize, and you are just very much set in your ways, you want your LaCroix Seltzer, you want your Taco Bell, you want, you know, all of these different things that you're going to find at home. Belize might not be the place for you. Um, it is, a, as we mentioned, still a very developing country, but um, you know, it, you can definitely find these products and these brands. You can definitely find your North American products if you go to a grocery store, but you can expect to pay a little bit extra um, you know, than you would back home for it. So we say just ditch the LaCroix, look for something local. It tastes just as great. I guarantee you it tastes just as great, if not even better. And there's even more, there's a wider array. There's a whole new world down here um, that you probably never heard of. There's you know, uh, different companies that operate in the region, uh, different brands like that. So you can definitely find something that will substitute uh, what you have available at home. All right, digging into the Belize real estate misconceptions. I know, uh, Leslie, this was something that you had to uh, experience firsthand. So why don't you give us uh, a little guide here on all of these little uh, misconceptions that people can expect when they're down here? Absolutely. So one of the realities is that real estate agents do not need to be licensed here in Belize. So there's no MLS. So for, you know, North Americans, that's very different. Um, I know when I first moved here, I kind of got tickled because once they found out you were new on the island and you were, you know, looking around at places, you'd be at a bar and it seemed like every single person that I met was 
was a realtor. Oh, I'm in real estate. Oh, I'm a realtor. Oh, I'm a real estate agent. And I was like, wow, how many realtors do they need on one island? It was shocking to me that everybody was a realtor. It was either that or they were into property management. And so then I learned really quickly that you had to be really careful because of this situation that they're not licensed. Um, and, you know, you, you get here and you start meeting people and you talk to people. And I'm not saying anything against realtors. There's a lot of great realtors here on this island. But it's just one of those perceptions that you do have to be careful being new on the, you know, new in Belize or here on the island, wherever you may be, um, and just understand the differences in real estate. Right. And, and, and something that you can, you know, you can expect from a licensed realtor, a licensed, you know, real estate agent is that they've received, you know, certain training they've got, they know what to, you know, what to look for when they're recommending a property to you. And that's just something we like to let everybody know is that, you know, the, the realtors here, the real estate agents aren't always licensed. Uh, they don't have to be. And so anybody can just come up to you, sell you real estate. And, and you know, you just need to be careful. We always, always, always advise going through a, a you know, an accredited agency, um, a registered office or an actual, you know, realtor or, or um, real estate agent that has training and has a, a license of sorts. Absolutely. Okay, what's another one? Let's see. Let me. Okay, so escrow, it's not a common thing here and it may not be available obviously in the country that you're looking at as well um, so that's just another reality with the real estate market here mm -hmm. that's right and so if you are looking at having that little extra security there um, with an escrow account just understand that it's not too common so again meeting somebody randomly at a restaurant walking down the beach they're going to offer you you know a property to come in and take a look at um, there's just little things like this es escrow you know escrow accounts are just not going to be common um, you know, just with, with any average realtor, it's, it's really just cash offers transferring from bank account to bank account. So, um, you know, if you've bought property previously, you understand that there are some security risks involved in handling a transaction like that. Um, and so, again, this is just another misconception here. We, we do advise everyone to do their due diligence. Be careful. Um, you do have escrow accounts when you work through our office, of course. Um, but this is just some helpful tidbits here for you if you're heading down to destination and doing some due diligence on your own. going crazy again, Ivan. <laughs> Take us back. Oh, okay. There we go. Another reality. Are you used to titling in 30 to 90 days? Pack your patience when you come to Belize or a lot of these Central American countries. Um, it, you know, sometimes literally it could take years. I always like to manage the expectations when I'm talking to clients because, you know, on the titling piece of it, and actually a lot of the different things, because things just take longer here. Um, you know, when I first moved here, it was so funny because one of my neighbors told me, he said, if you came to Belize with patience, you will lose it. <laughs> but if you did not come with it, you will find it. And I yep. like so hard because after being here for a little while, that was a very true statement. You know, island time is a very real thing here on the Ambergris Key. Um, we do things differently. I was telling somebody the other day that I realized, you know, I came from a very high paced career, corporate America in the States, you know, 20 year career. And when I came here, you know, it was harder to kind of settle down and relax a little bit. And I think I finally accomplished that because I realized in talking to some of my clients the other day that they're still on that go, go, go. And I was a little bit slower and more relaxed. <laughs> I was thinking, what's the problem, you know? And I was like, oh, wait a minute, I'm on that island time thing and I need to make sure, you know, we're on the same page here. So yeah, you're an island gal now. <laughs> oh, it just happens. It's a, it's, a, it's a good thing to happen, I think. But yeah, for sure. No, um, but but this is this is a good one. We just let people know, you know, if, if you know, 90, 30, 90 days of, of getting title, not gonna happen. <laughs> it's definitely not gonna happen. You will We'll get your title we, we guarantee it you will get it it's just going to take a very long time and you know whether or not that takes you 90 days or, or, or you know just 90 months it really can take a while but um, you know once you have a, a contact um, you know especially if you work through our our team here we do provide you with regular updates we do um, make sure that you receive oops I think we stopped sharing there for a minute uh -oh, well, there we go. Yeah, you do receive, um, you know, regular updates from our team to make sure that you are appraised of what's going on. But again, we just like to let everybody know, pack your patience, make sure you have a room for that in your suitcase, just make sure it's packed. All right, All right you have one more there, Leslie. One more reality, financing. 
is not usually 80%. And obviously the interest rates here are higher than normal. So that's just something you have to keep in mind. We do have a couple different finance and options. And, um, you know, when we really dive into the different properties and those, we go more in depth in that. But um, that's just something you need to keep in mind. It's that financing here is very different. Right, right. And you, you are able to obtain financing, as I mentioned, um, through Key International Bank. Um, and, and but if you do, you are looking to do this on your own, you are trying to obtain a loan here locally. It can be very difficult, guys, very, near, near impossible, I would say. Um, you know, what we recommend to, to a lot of our clients is if you are able to obtain a loan back home, um, you know, that is one option. If not, we do have options here as well. Um, but yeah, financing is, is just not a thing, as I mentioned, just like escrow. It's just very, you know, cash on cash offers um, that are made here. And, and so financing is not something that you'll find readily available. And um, local banks are also a little bit hesitant to provide foreign uh, loans and so foreigners with loans. And so um, this is just another thing we'd like to let everybody know ahead of time. Um, I, I'll take this one here, Leslie. So quality and well-built property will probably cost you just as much as it would in the United States. And, you know, the reason we mentioned this is because we, we do have a lot of people who are looking to, as, as, as Leslie mentioned, come down here, be on island time, relax and be happy. And it is a lot more affordable than, than people do believe. But uh, sometimes if you want to have just this very high quality home that is to your expectations, has your finishes, granite countertops, the works, um, it's going to cost you. It's definitely going to cost you because the average Belizean or the average, you know, construction company here will not, you know, make homes uh, with those sorts of finishes. So if you're looking for something very similar to what you'd be expecting back home, uh, you can definitely expect to pay around the same prices there for that. Um, and another one that we like to let people know here, if you are from the US, uh, your rental income does need to be reported. Uh, you know, please, 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 if you ever hear anyone say to you that you do not, you, you, oh, you can just have a, an Airbnb out here. You do not need to, to report the tax. That's just money that's coming in. No, please don't. We are not, um, you know, we're not certified accountants. We are not legal advisors, but this is one thing that we do like to let everyone who's, who, who speaks to us know you do 100% need to report uh, your rental revenue uh, over to the IRS if you are an American citizen there. All right, I think this is the last one here, Leslie. Yes, so putting, I can't get where I can see, putting your condo in the rental market. Again, that's where I kind of touched on where everybody that you meet at the bars also are into the property management. So we really recommend work with, you know, um, people that are true property managers and have that in place for their properties because, you know, if you just get somebody that's at a bar saying, oh, yeah, I can take care and manage your property for you when you're in a different country and not obviously where you can, you know, check in on things, you know, it's tempting sometimes on a really pretty day here to want to go out and maybe go snorkeling that day or go fishing that day. And what if you have guests arriving and they're not taken care of? So it's really important if you're not going to be in that same country to get a reputable property manager. Oh, wait, one more. Sorry about that. All right. And closing fees can be expensive, uh, but the ongoing fees are affordable. So again, just to give everybody a heads up. So closing fees here uh, range between the eight and 10% price. Um, again, that's just depending on, you know, which attorney you use and, and little details like that, but it is between eight and 10% of the, the purchase price of your property. Um, again, a little bit higher, but your ongoing fees are going to be a lot more affordable. As we mentioned, your taxes, um, you know, and, and anything that's ongoing for maintenance and repairs and things like that, much more affordable to get done out here um, than it would be in the United States there. All right, and some Belize real estate pros here. So as we mentioned, you get your low property tax. Uh, these are some of the ongoing costs here that we talked about. So your low property tax, your low rental income tax, and the wonderful one that we mentioned previously, no capital gains tax. So that's very helpful um, for everyone who's considering property ownership here. And some cons, just to recap everything that Leslie and I just went over. So your closing fees can be a little bit high. So that's 8% of your stamp tax there, plus your legal fees. 
Um, tiling can take time, pack that patience. Uh, and then you do need to do your extra due diligence. Uh, this is why we invite people to come down and see the destination for yourself. Come down for one of our discovery tours, you know, explore the island, explore the ownership opportunities, talk to uh, you know, the, the banking facilities here, talk to a, a banking agent, talk to uh, the expats that live here, see what they you know, think about the island, about the country, um, and, and really get a, get a, a boots on the ground experience here um, when you're down here. That, that will definitely solidify your decision about whether or not you want to make a, a purchase here in the country. And for those of you who are seriously considered considering ownership overseas, we'd like to offer you the consumer resource guide. And this is a free resource that we offer. It contains the 15 must ask questions when you are buying property overseas. These are 15 questions that we recommend everyone uh, answer truthfully, just be honest with yourself because it does talk a little bit about, you know, whether or not you, you will acclimate well. It's not just about buying a beautiful house on the beach. It's about, you know, being part of the, the community, learning the, the culture, maybe even learning the language. Um, you know, it gives you a little, some helpful tidbits about the economy, about the banking, about shopping, about just a whole bunch of different things is, is what you can expect when you are reviewing this document. So go ahead and request that um, if you'd like to review it, if you'd like to receive a free copy. Uh, there's the email address right there, webinar at ecidevelopment.com. All right. And I think, let's see, we are getting close there to wrapping up. So let's just explore some of the hottest spots in Belize right now. Absolutely. As we mentioned, Ambergris Key produces 70% of Belize's tourism revenue. You heard me right, 70%. That's a huge number, but um, Ambergris Key is, it's where it's at. I mean, let's just face it. Yeah, and it really depends on what it is that you're looking for here, um, you know, in the region. If you remember that that investment curve that that Leslie and I were going over, uh, really, are you looking for rental property that that will cash flow? Belize has it. If you're looking for residential, you wanting to retire uh, either this year in a couple of years, and you just want to be ready. Belize has it. If you're not sure, you're still just starting on that journey, you want to learn a little bit more, what are the pros, what are the cons, you know, things that will work specifically for you, let's find out. Let's explore and discover what is available here. And something we, we, we do uh, make a point of highlighting for everybody is exactly what we talked about earlier. Follow those trends, follow what the international brands are doing or where they're looking, right? You see increased airlift in a destination, Again, that's an indication that more people are, you know, have been searching for that. Uh, you know, these air carriers, they're, they're seeing that there's interest. More people are searching for Belize, 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 Belize. Uh, you know, they start offering more, more flights to the destination. And over time, as you see that expanding, you know that that is a place that you want to own real estate to receive rental revenue. You know, record highs in tourism, where the flights go, the people go, where the, where the hotels go, the people go, where these big brands like the Marriott go, uh, like the Hilton, that's where the people will go. You're opening a destination to a whole new um, group of travelers who probably didn't even know the destination existed. And so you're just guaranteed that rental revenue there. You're guaranteed appreciation uh, on your residents, of course. And it's all a matter of being in the right place at the right time. This is the famous secret beach area. It's not so much a secret anymore, but, um, you know, back in the day, uh, this was a nice spot where, you know, just a few select people could know about. And now it's just a booming tourism spot here on the island. Um, and again, it's all about having the right place at the right time. As I mentioned, it was, it was a little bit unknown. And as people started, more, more and more people started coming to the island, the area became more and more popular. People started hearing about it. And, you know, now it's, it's just this booming, amazing place. I always get nostalgic when I look at these pictures because it just reminds me of what Ambergris could used to look like, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Look at that, that, that right there. For those of you who answered yes and have been here um, to the island, that what you're seeing, this stretch of road here is the front street. And a little further down this way would be Holiday Hotel. Um, the water taxi, if you took the water taxi, would be a little bit further down this way. But this is Front Street. This is Barrier Reef Drive that everybody, you know, if, if you've been here, you had to have driven past that. And that's what it looked like in the 70s. And now this is what Amberger Ski is like in, you know, today, in, in the modern time. You can see that it not only has expanded. That area that I was showing you was, I hope you can see my mouse, was just this little spot right around here. And look at that. The island has just expanded. The population has expanded. And there's even more room to grow. You still have the west side of Amberger Ski here. This is the secret beach area that I was referring to, but just amazing, amazing growth and expansion. Uh, you can see right there, that's still part of Front Street. This is 
another one of the water taxis here. Just a beautiful, beautiful progression over time. Uh, if you took one of the puddle jumpers like Tropic Air or Maya Island Air, this, this was the airstrip way back in the day, um, you know, that, that people would land on. You see those little, those little Cessna carriers right there? That, that is what people would fly into um, back in the 80s. And now you have this amazing little airstrip here on the island. Tropic Air is now flying internationally. You can fly in from Cancun, from South America, um, from different areas and fly directly into the country. It's just amazing to see that progression. Um, and of course, you know, you, you have this charming, colorful, just vibrant community here. As I mentioned, one of the things that is at the core of ECI is creating community, cre making sure that you feel at home. It's not just having a house by the beach and, you know, that's it. No, it's, it's being at home, being happy, finding your freedom and finding your happiness here uh, in the destination and in the countries. Um, Leslie did talk a little bit about the, the water activities here. Uh, as you can see, there's just so much to do here on the island and so much to enjoy, but there's still some fun things to do on the mainland. Uh, Leslie talked about Lobster Fest that's going to be happening next week. Uh, that's a very exciting one. Uh, Wine Divine has a lot of social nights. You know, you have the Costa Maya Festival that's usually in August and Carnival that's a big one in, in September, which is one that I'm personally excited about. Um, and interested in, in seeing how that starts to develop. So again, guys, so, so, so much to do here. And there's a little bit of something for, for everybody. Um, if you are you know, in looking to be involved, as we mentioned, being a part of the community here, there are ways of doing that. Um, there, there's a lot of ways to give back. Uh, you know, you, we have a children's shelter here that, that you know, accepts volunteers. If you're looking to head down and do things like that, there are a lot of groups that accept charitable donations and accept helping hands, especially during this COVID time. It has been very hard on a lot of families, but um, there, there's just, again, so much to do, not only uh, for people that are looking to come down and, and make savvy investments, but there is just so much to do to be a part of a new community and a part of a new um, group of, of like-minded individuals here. Uh, and lastly, as we mentioned, there is, of course, the world-renowned diving. All these little spots that you're seeing here, all these little circles, these are all the different dive sites, or, or one of the popular dive sites, because there are several more, but these are all the popular dive sites located along the island there. And there's so, so many, um, but we have some of the popular ones here. Whole Chan and Shark Alley are just a must stop. Everyone who comes to the island just has to do, um, you know, Whole Chan and Shark Alley. Um, that's, that's where Leslie mentioned that she did um, swimming with sharks. So that, that is definitely a, a number one they recommended for everybody. All right, last question. Last question before we give everybody all the answers to all of their questions. Where in Belize are two thirds of overnight visitors heading? You heard Leslie give you guys a number earlier. So where are the majority of overnight visitors heading? Is it in Plasencia? Is it in Corozal, Ambergris Key or the Cayo district there? All right, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some submissions here. Yep, yep, all right. A lot of people, you guys are listening. I'm so happy to, to see that. All right, and we are gonna go ahead and, oh, wait, one more thing. So one more tip here. And this is something that I mentioned earlier. So bring small US bills with you. Um, your bills specifically are, uh, you, you can use them in any store. You know, if you're paying at a restaurant, if you're paying for your flight, whatever the case may be, but your, the US bills will work. Um, it's just the coins that will not work. So you don't need to do any conversions when you're heading down here. All right, so how did you do? Number one, Belize has six districts. Um, you guys probably saw those on the map there. On November 19th, the answer was B, we celebrate Garifuna Settlement Day. And then last but not least, there's 70% of the tourism overnight travelers head to Ambergris Key. So hope you guys were uh, listening along. You guys got as uh, many of those right. And Leslie is gonna be giving us a brief overview of the different communities here uh, on the, uh, that, that ECI has available that are in Belize. Um, and then we will be wrapping up and answering some of your questions there. So, Leslie, why don't you take it away there for us? I will. We're going to go through these pretty quickly because obviously we're getting a little bit low on time and we'll get some of your questions answered. Um, but definitely we can reach out with your property consultant and get more details on these properties. But as you'll see on the map there, we've got several different opportunities here on Ambergris Key. See if I can go to the next. We have the Test Village, which are our tiny homes. Everyone's really excited. Phase one is completely sold out. Uh, we hope to be launching phase two later in the year, so we'll keep you updated on that. They start at 
Then we have our Best Western Grand Bayman Gardens Resort, um, obviously branded hotel residence in Belize for under um, 129.9 turnkey. Uh, the fleet building's in construction now. We have the Gallium building that's launched and will start construction soon and uh, growth uh, for other buildings down the way. So definitely the Best Western is a great option. Then we have our Marriott Residences, beachfront Caribbean residences starting at $299.9. And again, the strip of property that is on the beachfront is truly spectacular. Um, so we're really excited for that to start breaking ground here shortly. Indeed, and we'd actually like to invite everybody yeah. to another webinar that we're going to be hosting next week. We're going to be talking specifically about those two um, properties that Leslie just mentioned, the Best Western Grand Bayman Gardens. Let me go two slides back. So we're going to be talking about the Best Western Grand Bayman Gardens here. That is the building A that you're seeing right there by our pool. Um, these are some, this is a rendering here of the Galleon building, and this is an actual image of one of the, the residences there. So we're going to be talking about this community, talking about the ownership opportunities that are available and then we're also going to be giving everybody an exciting update about the Marriott residences here uh, on Ambergris Ski. For many of you who have been following us for quite a while now you've known that this has been a little bit this has been in the pipeline for some time and we are finally ready to give you guys some really exciting news. So um, for those who would like to be a part of that we are going to include a registration link um, in the follow-up email that you're going to be receiving this evening with the recording of this presentation. Uh, I would really hope to see as many of you on there as possible. I know a lot of you have expressed interest in both of these communities. Um, and so it would be very exciting to see all of you on there and we can answer your questions about those two communities there. So it's going to be on June 29th next week at, uh, I believe it's 12 Eastern. All right, and I promised everybody a free resource there. And so you guys are going to be receiving the free uh, Belize handbook. This is a very comprehensive resource that talks everything about Belize. Everything that Leslie and I just talked about, it's all in this book and then some. There's just so much information that we obviously cannot wrap into a one hour presentation. And so there is this free resource that we would like to provide to everybody. You are going to be receiving this in the follow up link uh, in the follow up email as well as the consumer resource guide that we promised. All right, and so with that, I would like to open the floor to answer some of everybody's questions here. And I see a lot of them came through. So I'm gonna to try to start at the top here. All righty, so Glenn is asking, what is the best way to get a rental unit reserved before getting to Belize? All right, Glenn, so that's an excellent question. So I believe you are interested, if you are interested in either, you know, the Best Western, uh, the tiny homes that Leslie showed, the Marriott residences, whatever the case may be, uh, you can contact your property consultant if you don't have one as yet. Please email us at the email address that I mentioned, webinar at ecidevelopment.com. And one of our property consultants will reach out to you. It's only a $999 reservation, which is refundable to you. Uh, and that locks you in for the specific residence that you want. Um, you know, your property consultant will send you all the material that you need, and they will then um, show you the availability. If you like residence number one, you send in that deposit and that locks you in uh, for that residence until you are able to make it down, do your due diligence and have an inspection here on the unit. Um, let me see here. Nick is asking, are there any passive citizen citizenship residency or ways to reduce taxes through buying property in Belize? Yes, there are several, Nick. And uh, if you email us again at webinar at ecidevelopment.com, we can provide you with some more details there. And we can actually send you the residency resource guide that I mentioned that has just all the information that you could possibly need um, to, to better understand the different residency programs and citizenship programs that we have available here. I see one, Ivan. Somebody's asking, sure. how long can you come in and stay as a visitor? So um, when you come in, you have a 30-day stamp. And if you decide, though, that you want to extend, it's super easy to do. You go to the immigration office, and they will stamp and extend your stay. Um, so that's something you can do monthly you know, if you decide to extend. Awesome, awesome. Steve is asking if the webinar is live. Yes, it is being recorded. So you guys are going to be receiving uh, the recording of this presentation. Um, 
Deanna, excellent question. How much is typically required for down payment? That varies, um, you know, from 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 you know purchase to purchase. But if you are looking at ECI properties, uh, you only need to put a twenty percent down payment on the residence of your choice. So ECI offers up to eighty percent financing on any of our developments and any of our communities. So you're only able, so you really only need to put twenty percent down. Uh, and to put that into perspective, at the Best Western, you know, your residence starts at nine hundred and I'm sorry, $99,000 at uh, 20% down payment is under $20,000. So $20,000 could get you uh, your branded Belize residence already. Uh, let me see here. Is Belize strict about mandating masks, social distancing, etc.? cetera? Um, well, it is being required at this moment, um, but they are easing up as the vaccination program and everything goes through. That will be something that does get removed. Um, it is not as you know strict as I've seen in other countries. Of course, everyone is as respectful as can be. Um, you know, as long as you're wearing your mask, you don't have to have it when you're in a moving vehicle. You wouldn't need to have it, you know, when you're socializing with family members and things like that. So it is it is a lot less strict than I've seen in many 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 other countries. Uh, let me see here. There's a lot of helpful questions that everyone is asking here. And I want to make sure that we're answering all. Oh, are vaccinations mandatory? No, they are not. Uh, after you, Elsa is asking, after you make a reservation, how soon is the down payment needed? Uh, we would, uh, again, depending on the community, but about 30 days um, is when the, the down payment is needed. But we try to work with all of our buyers, of course, to make sure that um, the payment plan that is established is agreeable for everybody. And I am seeing just a lot of amazing questions being asked here. And some of these are very specific, everybody. So what I will do is, what, is we're gonna take um, just some copies of these questions that everyone is asking. Um, and we're going to either put you in touch with your property consultant or we can reach out to you directly and answer these questions. I do wanna be respectful of everybody's time and we try to keep these uh, presentations to uh, just an hour and not over. I know everybody has a lot going on today. So um, I'm gonna take a look at just one more here. Uh, Victor is asking, how is Belize and Nicaragua different and, and similar? Uh, you yeah, know, well, we could go all day and all night about that. <laughs> and Leslie actually could have some very helpful tidbits. She's actually in the process of moving to Nicaragua. Um, so Leslie, why don't you give us maybe some yeah. of your top three, you know, little similarities and differences there? Yeah, I mean, obviously they are, they're two totally different countries. Um, obviously here I live on an island, so that's a big difference for me in Nicaragua when I'm there. Um, in that country, I'm on the Pacific side, so the waters are a little bit differently, but you do have on the Pacific side, obviously you have the waves, whereas here on the island, because of the barrier reef, you don't have that. So it's a very different feel. Um, there being on mainland in Nicaragua, you have you know things to explore that are very different here. They have a lot of volcanoes I'm finding out. So that's <laughs> interesting to go see the different volcanoes. Um, and there, are, you know, some of the larger cities you have you know, you do have your KFC and your Pizza Hut and your Subway and a Walmart and some of the normal things, whereas in Belize, you don't have those. So there are some differences. There's beautiful and wonderful things about both countries. So I mean, you know, I love that I get to still share time between the two, um, but your property consultant can answer all those questions. And again, I'm seeing a lot of questions um, about COVID and how things were handled here, but your property consultant can go over that because we do want to respect everyone's time. So if your questions didn't get answered live, know that we do record those and send those on to your property consultant so we can get your questions answered for you. We're here to be a resource. That's what our role is. Um, we know, I mean, this is a big decision, whether it's for an investment standpoint or for a lifestyle change. So we want to be um, a resource to you and answer all those questions and take the time needed. So just um, reach out to us. No, we've been really slammed lately. There's been a lot of changes going on in Panama with the Friendly Nations visa, and we've had launches of our tiny homes in Honduras. So it's been an exciting time, but very busy. So if you don't hear from us we may have lost you somewhere in spam that's happening sometimes but we get lost in your spam too so please check for that as well um, because we do want to connect with you definitely definitely do yeah it, we are sending everybody a recording of 
today's presentation. So if you do not see that uh, within the next hour or so, please uh, do check your junk mail or your spam mail. We may have ended up in there and we definitely want to make sure that we are reaching out to you and answering all of your questions. So as Leslie mentioned, we're going to pass along all of your questions to your individual property consultant. Um, if you do not have one, as I mentioned, please, please, please reach out to us at webinar ECI development.com. We would love to hear what questions you have, what concerns you may have about moving to uh, Belize or any of our other destinations here. And as I mentioned, I would love to see as many of you on for next week's presentation where we're going to be talking about the branded Belize residences. Uh, that presentation is going to go a lot more in detail about the ownership opportunities themselves. Um, and you guys can get a lot more information about how you can move forward and be living your best beach life here in Belize. And so with that, I'm going to say thank you once again to everyone who was joining us today. Leslie, any final words? No, I just, again, thank you. We enjoy spending these hours with you and just being able to get to know you better and share all the different offerings that we have. We truly have something for everyone. That's what I love about our CI properties is that, you know, whether it's the Pacific side and you're into surfing or whether you want to be snorkeling and scuba diving, um, or even the tropical highlands, we truly are looking for opportunities and something that's a fit for everyone. So um, just reach out to us and we look forward to talking to you soon. All right. Thanks so much, Leslie. And thanks again, everybody for joining us. We will be in touch. Take care now. Bye-bye.